we are going to look at classifying conic sections. Now, an equation of any conic can be written as this ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus cy plus f equals zero. And if we're given an equation like that, it's not obvious whether we have a parabola, a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. In order to decide which type of conic section it is before we try to graph it or write it in standard form or anything like that, we need to um, look at the discriminant, which is the same formula as in our quadratic formula. So it's b squared minus 4ac. What you have to realize, though, is that the b comes from your xy term, the a comes from your x squared term, and the c comes from your y squared term. So essentially, D, E, and F play no role in determining what type of conic section it is. Now our rules for our discriminant. If our discriminant is less than zero, meaning it's negative, and B is equal to zero, and A is equal to C, we have a circle. So all three of these conditions have to be met in order to be a circle. Now, if our discriminant is negative and either b isn't equal to 0 or a is not equal to c, then we get the ellipse. So if we have a situation where we have a discriminant less than 0, we have to decide between a circle and an ellipse. And to be a circle, b has to be 0 and a has to be equal to c. Well, if one of those conditions isn't met, then you know you're going to have the ellipse as opposed to the circle. Now, if our discriminant is equal to zero, you're going to have a parabola. And our last one, if our discriminant is greater than zero, you're going to have a hyperbola. So that's how we're going to tell what type of conic section we have. So here's our first example. It says classify the conic section with the given equation. We have zero equals 2x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 4. Now the first thing you have to realize is it does have to be equal to zero in order to use the discriminant. The next thing we have to do is figure out what is b squared minus 4ac. Now remember, our b comes from the xy term. And as I look at my formula here, I don't have an xy term. So that must indicate that my b is equal to zero. Then my a comes from my x squared term. So in this case, my a is 2. My c comes from my y squared term. Well, since there's no number there, it's just assumed that it's a 1. So when I calculate this out, 0 squared is 0, minus 4 times 2 times 1 is 8, so I get negative 8. So that takes me down to my two options. My discriminant is less than 0. So that means I have two options. I could be a circle, or I could be an ellipse. We don't know which one it is. So now we have to go back and check that extra criteria. It told me that if b is equal to 0, which we had, and a is equal to c, we would have a circle. Well, as I look back here, b was equal to 0, so that part checked out. But a is not equal to c, because my a was 2, my C was 1, so it failed that condition. means it's not a circle, so we pick our other one. It's an ellipse. Okay, here's another one. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with. I will give you a hint. You've got to take care of this negative 55 first, because our equation has to be set equal to 0 before you can actually apply this discriminant stuff. All right, hopefully you would have rewritten it as 9x squared minus y squared plus 54x plus 10y plus 55 is equal to 0. Then when you do your b squared minus 4ac, b comes from your xy term, so we don't have one. It is 0. Minus 4 times our a comes from our x squared term, so that would be a 9. And our c comes from our y squared term, which in this case is a negative 1. Well, when I multiply that out, 
I get 0 minus 4 times 9 times negative 1 gives me a negative 36. Well, minus a negative turns into plus a positive, so I get 36. So in this case, my discriminant ended up being greater than 0, which automatically leads me to a hyperbola. Okay, here's our next practice one. Let's go ahead and pause the video and see what you come up with for this one. All right, on this one, the first thing you needed to do was move everything to one side. I chose to move the 2y and the 4, move them to the left, left using subtraction. Then I did my b squared minus 4ac. So b comes from your xy term, which happened to be 0 again. The a comes from your x squared term, so that was 4. The c comes from your y squared term, term that was also 4. So I ended up getting 0 minus 4 times 4 times 4 gave me a negative 64. Well, that negative 64 is less than 0, so that leads me to the option of having a circle or having an ellipse. So then I went and I checked. Was b equal to 0? That was a yes. And then was a equal to c? That was a yes. So that means I end up with a circle for this one. 